Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true and welcome to Inscription, a fascinating game that's got a whole lot going on. You see, this isn't really just one game, it's multiple games layered on top of each other, and it's not what you might be expecting from first appearances. Okay, let's dive in. This one's much easier to get your head around to once you see it in action. So, just based on what's on the screen right now, some of you may already assume you know what you're getting into here. Because you've got a map, you've got branching paths, you've got events, and sometimes uh, there's gonna be combats. And when that combat does show up, it's decided using a turn-based card game, where cards have got an amount of attack damage, an amount of health. Okay, I think we've all seen this before. Except we haven't. This isn't actually a roguelike deck builder. It's something very different, because if I just step away from the game that's within the game, you'll see that's not what's happening at all. This is a horror game. A horror game in which you have been captured by this creepy bastard over here. He has decided to bring you to his house, because you have to play or he'll kill you, and if you lose, he'll kill you anyway. So, it's a bit of a no-win scenario. So... The game isn't about winning the game that's happening on this table. The game is about trying to survive being kidnapped by this creepy bastard. So you might be thinking, okay, well, what's the difference? You have to play the game anyway. Well, kind of, but what's really going on is uh, this world outside the game on the table uh, is where the real stuff's going on. So, for example, uh, there's a door over here. Well, why don't you just leave? Well, it's locked. So uh, how do you open it? I don't know. But, having done a few rounds just to learn the basics, I've started to figure out how a couple of things fit together. Because uh, there's a huge amount of stuff around this room you can interact with, and some of it I've started to figure out. So say for example, beginning of every game, you're going to be wanting to go over here and investigate this here skull. This skull has got some gold teeth. Every game, he's going to have some new gold teeth. That's a currency we can spend down the line. Brilliant. Really bloody convenient. There's a globe here. This I don't know what it does. You can spin it. Is there a particular way you're supposed to spin it? I've no clue. There's a candle here, which is below a thing. You can choose to put it out. Does that do anything? I don't know, but oh! Never mind, that did do a thing! There we go! I've just got a new card for this run through. Lovely! I swear I've done that before, and it didn't do anything last time, so. Yes, this game's weird, by the way. As I say, horror game. So sometimes uh, this skull lights up, sometimes it doesn't. There's a safe here. I've already managed to uh, crack that open because, uh, yes, this game. Uh, messes with you. Over here, for example, is uh, the rule book for the game. And on the first page, uh, it's got the combination for the safe. So uh, when you read the rule book, you'll figure out that combination. Uh, but it's not all to your advantage. This game is, uh, it's weird. And it straight up cheats. For example, some pages in the rule book are just missing, stained, torn out. Some cards aren't even in a readable language. Some cards you don't even know what they do, you just have to bloody figure it out. Behind the book, there's a couple of tools on the wall. I haven't figured out how to deal with them. There's just pitch black over here in this corner. There might be a way to light this up. I've managed to open one of the doors on the cuckoo clock, but not the other one. So, yeah, basically, I have to figure out how to survive and what these things all do. That's how I ultimately win. But the main source of uh, hints and uh, lore and all the rest of it is uh, by playing the game itself. So, uh, okay, let's dive into the game. It's pretty easy to get your head around as a starting point. So, okay, let's head over in uh, this direction. So, that's a nice, simple, uh, here's a bunch of cards. Uh, you can have some cards if you want some cards. So, uh, basically, the way you read these cards is uh, the number in the bottom left is how much damage they're going to do. The number in the bottom right is how much health they've got. And then, yeah, the one in the middle is a special ability, which some cards have. So, cockroaches are unkillable. So, when a card bearing this perishes, a copy of it is created in your hand, so you can just get another one out. Meanwhile, up in the top right, that's how you actually get cards onto the field. We'll get onto that in a second. So I'm just adding a card to my deck right now, and yes, I've already got a bullfrog to go with my, well, stoat, stink bug, and stunted wolf. Though you may notice that, um, they don't look like stoats, stink bugs, 
or stunt of wolves because nothing in this game is simple. Everything's just a little bit weird. So go on, I'll take a Coyote. This is a really good little starting card. Uh, so there we go. I've now got five cards uh, in the deck. Next up, we have the... Uh, that's the Sacrifice Point, I believe. Yes, as it's all, you know, horry, there's a lot of uh, nasty stuff going on. So this just means, uh, hey, pick a card and sacrifice it. That means that its special thing, the Sigil, can get passed to a different card. So this one is Mighty Leap, it's a defensive ability, and Stinky, a creature opposing the card bearing the sigil, loses one attack power. That's pretty good, but the Stink Bug's pretty mediocre. So the Stink Bug's getting sacrificed, sorry Stink Bug, because Stink Bug is one of the cards to talk to you. The cards talk to you, yet the game is, it's really bloody weird, but whatever. So, okay, these two cards are, yeah, other ones that talk to me. I will say it's Stunted Wolf. You can now pick up that ability. So, Stink Bug is now gone for this game. And in just a second, there we go. The wolf now smells, but like, you know, that's a good thing. Right, here we go. Fight now begins. And uh, this guy gets proper into the role playing, by the way. On occasion, he'll just straight up, you know, put on a special mask, give us a bit of scenery, all the rest of it. So, 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 how does this all get decided? Well, basically, by this scale. If I can do damage to his back line, then teeth, yeah, because everything's creepy, as I say, horror game, fall onto the scale and start tipping it towards him. He does damage to my back line, then, yes, at that point, starts going in his direction, teeth points in his favour, etc, etc. I know that after I get my first turn right now, he's about to, uh, yes, send out this bastard. So, he's going to come onto this space. And then when he gets his go at the end of, yeah, this guy's go in a second, I get the first go. He will attack because I can see the symbol to here and here. There's a spider. As I say, game is creepy. So he won't attack in front of him. He'll attack either side. He's got three health. He'll do one damage to here and to here. If I don't have creatures guarding these spots, therefore, he's going to do damage directly to me. And that's going to mean teeth on the scale. Yes, I'm explaining it. You don't have to passive aggressively drum your fingers. It's fine. So, as a result of that, I want to play a card to shut this guy down. What are we going to use? Well, my newly improved Stunted Wolf might just be really damn solid. He does two damage, he's got two health, and more importantly, he now smells. He can neutralize that creature, but I can't put him in. He's got a cost to play. The cost is blood sacrifice. Luckily, I've got a happy squirrel card that's free to play, so down it goes, and now I can play the Stunted Wolf by sacrificing the squirrel who trembles while you're doing it. And now we just put you down right there, spec flipping tacular. Now, because the squirrel died, that also got me a bone token. Whenever anything dies on my side, I get a bone. That's another way I can get creatures on the field, so this lovely creature could go with four. Stoat would need another sacrifice, so the only way to actually get the uh, stoat out right now would be to give up the wolf. I don't want to do that. Unless I use my special items, uh, you get a couple of special items at the beginning of the match. So you can get yourself a free squirrel anytime you want to, but I don't want to do that. It's all A-OK. -okay. I'm going to stop right now. My wolf will now attack the back line, so two teeth in my favour. He comes straight along and... Should have read his card a bit more carefully, because, uh, yes, he just um, comes in... And then, straight afterwards, uh, moves. So at the end of the turn, the card will move. So, okay, I now need to choose whether I'm going to draw a new card, which is part of my deck, though I can't see my uh, full deck at this exact moment in time, or a squirrel. You can always uh, have a squirrel. Okay, so uh, I've only got like one card left of my deck at this point. So it's going to be... Wait, what is it going to be? I can't remember, but I'm going to take the squirrel anyway, so, okay. Take squirrel, play squirrel, use that to play stoat, sacrifice. I love how the cards tremble, because they're scared you're about to kill them. So stoat is going to get one attack in over here, but basically I'm going to start doing a big damage to him. Because as soon as I get up to, uh, yes, uh, five in my favour, I auto win. So... In a moment, he's probably going to attack here for one tooth, do one damage to this guy, but I'm going to get a whole bunch of damage straight back, so we're still doing pretty well. Ring the bell, end my turn, there's two teeth, up to four in my favour, he gets one back, and this guy moves once again. So, hang on, what is my last card, by the way? Oh yes, the bullfrog. So... I could send the bullfrog out right now, but there's kind of no point because 
yeah, if I just end my turn immediately, I'm going to win. Though there is a point if you can in getting overkill. Because, yeah, uh, extra gold teeth beyond what you need to win are currency. Same as those gold teeth we picked up off the skull. So pick up them, you can spend them in a shop down the line. But yeah, for the time being, I think we're all done. So my card's just attacked. There's another three teeth. And there we go. I have won that encounter. Hooray for me. Straight over to the next. It's another card pick. So, all right. We have got three. And if I want to, yes. This is one of the items I've managed to find in his room by solving a previous puzzle. So now I can force a re-roll if I want to. So we've got Rat King. These guys are the king of bones. So yeah, two blood to get them out. But that symbol means that when they die, you get a pile of bones. Can be very useful. Though honestly, I think two blood is a bit too expensive for the Rat King. The Moose Bunk is strong. That's a lot of health. And yeah, he shoves other people out of the way. So he just moves around. But honestly, he's just... He's too expensive. The Cat, however, is a really good unit. Because the Cat, you can sacrifice without him dying. He's basically a free permanent squirrel on the field. So put him somewhere safe. He can be really good. So I'm going to take one cat right now. And I can just walk away from the table between turns at any time I want to, by the way, just to see whether maybe something could have changed. Because sometimes uh, things change. For example, yes, this picture right here. The trick to this picture is if you can recreate that in your game perfectly, you'll get something hidden behind the picture, like a bonus for that game. But I've not seen the ringworm card just yet, so I simply don't flipping know. Okay, as I've already got three items, so I should be at cap, I'm going to go to campfire. Campfire is basically a um, card upgrade, though naturally it's incredibly creepy, because why wouldn't it be? So, okay, on this occasion, yes, you are going to uh, go to the fire, and you're going to give a card a plus one, attack. Now, naturally, the implication is uh, these guys are going to eat the card, but as far as I'm aware, they never do. Until they do. Because this guy, he cheats. He will straight up cheat. Sometimes the game will pretend it's bugged out, and just you'll be in a much worse situation than you were a second ago. Sometimes uh, you'll be faced with encounters you basically can't win to burn one of your lives if you're doing a bit too well. Uh, the Game Master is... Uh, not a fair individual. No. No, he is not. Also, I like how the cards that can speak, yes, beg not to be put in the campfire. For some reason, they don't want to be transformed. Uh, I don't know why, but they just don't. To be honest, yes, my wolf's pretty good, so he's the one going up. So, uh, here we go. He is now uh, three damage to uh, two health. You had an idea. Why not warm your creature by the fire? And maybe now just, uh, yeah, GTFO before... Oh, you see, here's where we're getting into creepy. I've not seen this before. So I've made him better. Now I could make him better again. But if I do, there's a risk. I lose him forever. No, I think we should go. So there we go. We're just going to enhance him and then we're just going to pull back. We withdraw. Okay, so this is the sort of nasty choice you have to make. Like, all the time. Keep on keeping on. And uh, yes, indeed. You do get yourself a tiny bit of grace, by the way. Those two candles over on the right there. If you die, one of them goes out, but you've still got another life. Right up to the moment where he decides you don't anymore, then you might not. Okay, what's he sending in? He's going to send in a basic wolf cub. This guy starts off weak, but he's going to get better after his first turn. So you want him to die like fast and uh, my bullfrog uh, could do it so okay i'm gonna send in a squirrel in order to get my cat on the table so sacrifice squirrel for cat the, the downside of uh, yeah cat is you get less bone tokens now what i could do is uh, well i could use cat to either get uh, yeah frog or wolf honestly get wolf on the table wolf is just a really solid starting card so cat is fine Wolf is in play. He didn't like that. He's about to take some damage. Because, yeah, he'll attack the back line for a handful of teeth. Then the wolf cub will come in and attack him. But he can't take it. He's got enough health to survive that. And actually, you know what? I can get the bullfrog down straight away. Because this is why the cat's good. The cat is reusable. So, cat once again. In comes a bullfrog. So, yeah, as long as I've got cheap cards to play, 
Basically, this is going to be an absolute slaughter. Now, you might be wondering at this point, is it possible to win on your very first turn before your enemy even gets on the field? Yes, I've done it. Because this game is deliberately kind of designed for both sides to cheat. He cheats by changing the rules whenever he wants to. I cheat by going around the room and picking up items and bonus cards I shouldn't really have. So, okay, what have we got here? That's a Coyote 4-4 bone, so... Yeah, the problem with cat is it does mean you don't have the bones as much. Otherwise, constantly killing squirrels uh, is rather useful. So, uh, there's literally nothing I can do right now. It's just end my turn, but that should be enough to, uh, yep, have a win. Lovely, 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 lovely. What's this one? I can't remember, but I'm worried about it. So, aha, we've got an event. Yes, he puts on masks to be even creepier on occasion. And this is uh, the shopkeeper. Now, if you find a uh, hunter, you can, uh, yes, purchase pelts with those gold teeth and then sell them uh, to uh, this woman for really, really good cards. So, oh. But if you show it with nothing, you get something. Oh. Okay. She's given me some money. And she's warm enough to show up without her pelts again. Which, in this game, might just mean she decides to kill me next time. Who bloody knows? So, okay. Back to another sacrifice point at this point. So, who are we sacrificing? You know what? This is a useful ability for the cat. But the cat itself is a weak card. So, okay. Get rid of the cat. And next up, Coyote. Yeah. The stoat has got way more health. So, Weird Robot Stoat is now going to have the ability to be stabbed over and over and over again. Lovely. Okay, keep on keeping on. And now we are going to have ourselves uh, another fight. But just be aware, sometimes the fights, they're not fair. They are just straight up not fair. So now I do not have, uh, yes, uh, the cat, but I can get the Stoat out straight away. So sacrifice Squirrel for Stoat. Stoat is now ready to block the Wolf Cub before he grows up. And on top of that, we can get Bullfrog in straight away. Okay, do not complain. You're not bloody dead, mate. It's fine. So here we go. That's a nice, easy few teeth in my direction. I block him from getting any teeth whatsoever. And I may as well just keep drawing cards. There's my stunted wolf. So now you to you. And there we go. This little starting deck is now in good shape. All right. It's a small, efficient deck. But things are going to start getting nastier over time. There's a bit of overflow of teeth, which is lovely. Okay. Got ourselves a brand new thing right here. Brand new cards. But on this occasion, I don't choose what the card is. I choose how much it costs. So... Okay, with the Stoughton play, I just want a basic card. Uh, Mantis, I like this card. All right. It's cheap and it attacks in either direction. Just like that little deer we saw earlier. Now, next up, we have got Duck being beheaded. Uh, that seems bad. Uh, is this by any chance? Yes, this is the uh, woodcarver. So, okay, here's another way I get to cheat. All right. I get to basically have a, a totem that gives me a benefit going forward. And occasionally, he'll just pull out a totem randomly when he feels like it too. So, okay, what are we going to have to our advantage here? Because this is the ability for me to say, yes, my squirrel cards will all gain the ability to, hang on, be airborne. Well, that doesn't help because they're not attackers. Or my squirrel cards will become better. Okay, they become stronger. But squirrels, you don't really want to leave on the field. So, okay, neither of them are that useful. But here's the head. Because right now I've only got the ability to improve my squirrels. But look at this lad. This is an insect. So, yeah, a totem is made up of uh, two halves. You've got yourself the bottom half, which is uh, what is the effect. And the top half, which is uh, what cards does that effect effect, if you see what I mean. So uh, these are not useful abilities uh, for my squirrels uh, to have, but cards get better is useful. So I'm going to take that and now I have uh, a totem. So my squirrels that I leave on the field uh, will get better, which is probably not so useful. But if I can find this woman again down the line, I could say make all my canine cards better as time goes by. Now that would be useful because wolves are good solid cards. And here we go, boss number one, the Prospector. 
Welcome to the cheating world. Because, uh, yes, at this point, one, he just takes one of your lives away. And two, well, as a benefit, you do actually get uh, smoke, which is nice. Though, greater smoke. I've never seen great smoke before. Don't know if that's a random chance. But yes, as compensation for the fact you just don't have one of your lives now, he'll give it back to you if you win the boss fight, by the way. Yes, you gain a little bit of uh, smoke, so that's just uh, free bones. Uh, and also, I'll say, you know, for a game master, he does put the effort in, all right? Proper lighting, scenery, all the rest of it. Say hello to the first boss. And he's indeed uh, the Prospector. He's, yes, creepy little bastard. And I don't have uh, two lives, uh, but he does. So you can't just cheese him, because he's got two lives. Okay? So, uh, alright, what are we going to do here, buddy? What are we going to do? He's about to send out, yes, uh, Coyote, so uh, to attack and to one health. The pack mule is critical. It doesn't attack, it just moves around as the fight goes on. But if you kill it, you get a giant pile of cards, which makes the fight a lot easier. So... Uh, Okay, I need that coyote to die. Now, if the greater smoke dies, then that might work in my favor. Because that's a lot of bones I can use to get my own coyote onto the field. So, uh, I mean, honestly, I see no reason why not. Let's just put the smoke here to block this coyote. Because uh, this pack mule can't bypass the coyote. He'll be stuck right here. Though, unfortunately, yes, another issue. I start with a boulder in the way, so I've only got three slots. He's got four. So I can only have so much on the field uh, for the time being. Okay. What do I want to get in play uh, straight away? Honestly, let's get a squirrel down and use the squirrel to get out the, uh, yes, stunted wolf right here. Because he can kill the pack mule in two, which is uh, pretty good, all things considered. So... Uh, I can't get a Mantis out, though, so okay. End of my turn right there. I could obviously get myself a Free Squirrel from the bottle, but don't worry about that. So, good start, but that's only phase one. So, Pack Mule is in play. He tries to attack the smoke. That guy can't move. And now, yes indeed, let's get everything out on the field. Because as soon as phase one ends and I win this first phase, he's going to cheat. He's just going to straight up cheat and there's nothing I could do about it. So, I mean, there's an argument to actually say, don't end the fight just this moment. Instead, ooh, kill the pack mule. Let him kill the greater smoke. And then win thereafter. Ooh, that's interesting. Because, yeah, with the coyote here, his wolf cub can't enter the field. Okay. I'm actually going to just pass here. So, go. That's him dead. Wolf cub enters. He attacks. And there we go. Now I've got all the bones over here. So, now we can start winning super fast. So, okay. Check on the situation with the scales, please. Scales are working, yeah, very much in my favour right now. I need something to finish off that wolf cub immediately. Best option would probably be just get the... Oh, sorry, I need to draw a card first. Yep, you're not wrong. My mistake. So, draw a card. There's the bullfrog. Okay, he's about to wipe out my entire hand. The bullfrog is not very good. So, I'm going to get the bullfrog down right now. And the bullfrog can take out the wolf cub. Then again, actually, I'm not about to... Oh, I'm not about to win. Okay, I'm playing a little bit cautiously here, so that's you dead. There's all the cards I want. Good, I've now got a really big hand of stuff. All right, and that's that card dead. And this card is now, yes, taking up my boulder. Okay, now I think I should pass and not do anything. I will then win, or rather I'll win the first round and then we'll be ready. So... Okay, let's let's get ready to go, though. As I say, I need to draw first. May as well just draw. That's my last card. So, okay, that's literally all I've got. So, there we go. Round one goes to me. And he's just going to declare there's gold in them there cards. And that means he just gets to hit all my cards and just kill them. And replace every single one of them with a gold nugget. 
And he also, at that point, always draws the Bloodhound to hunt down gold, which isn't what Bloodhounds do as far as I'm aware, but whatever. Now I can't do anything but draw squirrels. So, okay, I've got new cards because the Pacnia was carrying stuff I don't own. So, Skunkies, Stinky again, zero and three. Nothing too dramatic. I've got my own Bloodhound. So, okay, Guardian. What happens here? When an opposing creature is placed opposite an empty space, he moves to intercept. Okay, good card. But I've been gathering bones this whole time. So I'm ready to start just tossing out all the bones. Okay, he's going to take out that. I can't stop his bloodhound coming onto the field. Best thing I can probably do is... Yeah, the thing is I physically can't actually get out a two blood card. Like the bloodhound because I've only got one space for a squirrel right now so okay could get the stoat out stoat's actually pretty good mantis is actually pretty good too yeah you know what let's get the mantis out straight away so squirrel and then mantis go go that's going to kill the coyote so end my turn because there's literally nothing more i can do and one a tooth one a dead and Bloodhound starts yeah taking out that so he's opening up spots for me take a squirrel because i can't do anything else and once again, I can only do, yeah, uh, one thing right now. Hang on, how strong's the stoat? Not that strong, actually. I could send my own, no, I can't send my own uh, Bloodhound in. Well, I could, but I need to sacrifice my Mantis to do it. Instead, the best bet might just be, then again, Coyote. Coyote can't kill Bloodhound and would be killed in return. But that will buy time for my Mantis to do his job, so do it. So he'll weaken the Bloodhound. He'll keep him nice and busy. End the turn. So he starts weakening. There's two more teeth. I need a couple more teeth. Adder's coming in. Adder is an instant kill card. It will kill anything it bites. But fortunately, it's only attacking the Gold Nugget right now, which isn't the worst thing in the world. Everything's fine. So, okay. Now I can send Squirrel in and deploy Stoat using Squirrel. There we go. It was not a bad play. You're about to win the game. It's going to be fine. So here we go. He kills that. Mantis does a beautiful job. And boom. Boss number one. Once you know what his deal is, you understand the pack mule. Not so bad. This guy kicked my ass a few times first time I played. But once you understand him, he's manageable. But uh, yes, now things start getting harder. We're going to move to a nastier world. But first we get a boss card. So okay. A big filthy hog, I love it. So this guy is a bellist. When a card bearing the sigil is played, a chime is created on each adjacent space. A chime has zero power, one health. So this guy is really good at just creating a big barrier if you just need to desperately play for time. Alternatively, oh, the gak. I like the gak. You know why? He's free and he's a bone. Yep, take the gak. The gak is a really nice and with that we move on to world number two the horrifying swamp here it comes everything's gone a little bit uh, green okay so uh, yes indeed let's just make sure we understand uh, my deck here i want to just have a bit of a look see at my deck nice and faster because uh, we're about to go into a cave a cave is basically uh, a gamble. There's no penalty if you lose the gamble, but knowing what's in your deck is useful. Because, uh, yes, you're being asked to do a, a trial here. You're going to draw three cards uh, at random. You have to guess which of these things is most likely to be true. So, do they have sigils? Uh, is the total bone cost over five? Uh, or is the total, uh, yes, attack over four? Now, I don't have that many sigils, to be honest. So, uh, attack's my best bet. This is pure chance, but... You can get a really good card out of this. So that's really good. That's good. We've done it. 3 1 1. Stunted Wolf did his job. So we should actually get a good selection of cards here. This is just lovely. So, yeah, there are always sigil cards out of caves, which is nice. So uh, the Mole, who has the ability to. Yes, he will intercept an attack on any space that was about to take damage. So he saves you from uh, taking damage to, uh, yes, the actual scale. He is also a sprinter. So he moves around. That's just a bonus sigil. Then we've got the bat. 
over here who is airborne. So, okay, he bypasses enemies opposite him and just attacks straight into the back line. Not a bad thing at all. And as a bonus, is also an ant spawner because why not? So, yes, you get a free ant in your hand when this creature goes into play. Ants are actually pretty good. Then we've got, um, this. So, say hello to this creature. Unfortunately, I don't know what he is. Alright, it's weird tentacle monster, but I don't know how much damage it does. What I do know is, uh, yes, it does it to the left and the right. To be honest, I'll give it a go. We'll try and figure out what the bloody hell this card does. Can't be too terrible. So, either items. I've still not used my items. So, go over to the polling station. I can't remember what that one is. No, this is the straight-up sacrifice. You just have to kill something. But when you kill something, you get something good in return. And I'm going to be honest. The bullfrog is not great. So, just get rid of him. He gets sacrificed. And if we're lucky, yes, the Bone King is happy with me. Now, I get a free bone at the start of every fight, which isn't great, but it'll do. It's a good way of just clearing chaff out of your deck. And there's my free bone. Love it. So, okay. What are we going to do, buddies? What are we going to do? He's got a stump on his side, one on my side. He's going to send in a bullfrog. Bullfrogs do almost no damage and can, yes, capture flyers. That's their thing. They can intercept flyers. So, definitely don't send the bat over there, but I don't have a bat, so it's fine. So... Okay, get the squirrel just uh, down here. This is about to die anyway. Use him to get the stoat out. It'll do for the time being. Do I have anything else I can get out? I could get out a gak. I should have actually sent him over here. He could have won one-on-one -on -one against the bullfrog. Okay, gak, you just start working on that stump and do what you can do. Now, I could also... You know what? No, save that for next turn. Okay, ring the bell. So straight away, I get myself at least some teeth. He attacks me back. Oh, here comes Double Adder. Yeah, here's where things get nasty. The Adder's going to come in, and he's just going to kill my stoat. All right, keep me alive. Yeah, good luck with that. Um, He physically can't be kept alive now, because the Adder will kill any creature it bites. Adders just kill everything. They're really powerful. Give me a squirrel. Okay. And now what I want to happen is... I mean, I don't know what's about to happen, to be honest. No clue. But you're about to go down there. And we're going to get this thing out. And... Irritatingly. Yeah, if I put him here, then... He'll only attack in one direction. But if I put him here, he'll attack the stump. But he can take a fair few... I don't know what's about to happen. It's two. The damage is two. And the green means that's a dynamic number. I don't know why the damage is two. But the damage is two. So that's nice. So, okay, we've taken out the stump and we've done a bunch of damage. The adder's about to take out the stoat. And, okay, uh, Cthulhu is uh, holding on. I need to draw a card because I've got no cards. Oh, that's precisely what I needed. Coyote can kill the adder before the adder can kill him. But, actually, you're going to kill this guy. So, Coyote gets played right here. End of my turn. Both adders die. Boom. And... Okay. We're fine. Choose a card. The nice, simple, easy choose a card scenario. Cat. Ooh, new one. Beehive. So, when it's attacked, you draw a bee. Alternatively, yes, the never-dying cockroach. I'll give the beehive a go, sure. We'll see how we feel about that. Next up, items or mushroom man. The mushroom man wants to see a matching pair of cards. If you don't have a matching pair of cards, he'll give you a card. And I'm pretty sure I don't. So, hello there, mushroom man. And also mushroom man, who's growing out of mushroom man's face. Uh, creepy as anything. No pairs. So instead, they take one of the creatures. So we get to choose and... Means another Cthulhu. I feel like Mantis is cheaper and safer. It still does good damage. And again, these might double up. They might double up. I don't know. So, okay. We'll just take a Mantis. Mantis is a good, solid, safe card. Straight into another fight. 
over here. I'm sure everything is going to be fine. Bone Daddy gives me a free bone. Appreciate that. Bonus Squirrel. And uh, yes, my Stunted Wolf is back again. Things are going to start getting harder at this point. Yes, Worker Ants get stronger as there are more Worker Ants. So, number of Ants owner has on the table is their attack power. In short, they're going to be 2-2 two -two cards, and that's nasty. That's really rather nasty, meaning Stunted Wolf can't stand up to them. But in theory, a Mantis could uh, take them out. Now that's intriguing. I'm not sure what the Ringworm does, by the way. It seems to be complete trash. So, okay, get the Squirrel down and use that to get the... Mantis down. That'll do a stab and a stab and also start working on all these lads. It's not bad as a starting point. So he comes in and this is where, yes, the AI just starts getting huge amounts of damage immediately. Just straight up. And how are we going to stop them? How are we going to stop this right now? I need to do a huge amount of damage. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Um, ha, 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 ha. Okay, what have I got? Well, I've got a hook. The hook lets me say, actually, that card belongs to me now. Uh, screw you. And I feel like if I don't use that right the second, we're going to die. So I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to hook the worker ant over to me. Which is a bit of a waste because, yes, on my side, it's only doing one damage. But it will at least do something. And then I can squirrel the stunted wolf onto the field here. And I've got plenty of bones... And I can't do anything with this just now. Well, I could, but I don't want to. Uh, okay. Back to the center. Work ant on one. It's still slightly in his favor, actually. Okay. Next up. If I want to get Cthulhu onto the field, uh, then again, that's about to do one. That's about to do three. You're about to do one and one. I think I'm about to just straight up win, right? Like, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm just going to end there, and that should be enough to just win immediately. Yes, just literally. Okay, so, 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 so. Pick a card of a particular family. Pick a card based on its value. Pick a card, uh, your free choice. We'll go to that, because then I can top up my items having used up the special hook. So, ah, by the way, uh, yes, this is the special John card. It's the best card of the game because this game has taste. When you die, you create a death card, which is just you. So this is uh, you in the moments before you died uh, the previous time. So you choose what it's got based on your previous deck. So on this occasion, the John card costs five bones, does a tiny bit of damage and doesn't have much health, but gets better over time. I will take the John card because John is the best card of the game, obviously. Next up, over to the item. We're not shop, you just choose an item. So, free bones, um, free tooth. You can figure out how uh, that works by yourself, by the way. It's pretty uh, explicit. And uh, yes, then fan lets you just uh, make something fly. I'll take the bone pig. Bone pig's pretty good. Move in this direction, then another cave, then aha! The woman who can get me a better totem, finally. All right, game, show me what you got. So coming in, we've got double bullfrog, which is... Uh, not very good, to be honest. I'm feeling pretty confident about that, especially with Stunted Wolf in play. So, all right, get a squirrel down and use him to get a uh, wolf. Yeah, this is going to be fine. This is going to be really good because uh, with him smelling, this frog is literally neutralized. It can't do a thing. Then I just need enough bones uh, to get John going on. And John, why didn't you put the stoke down first? Cocking idiot. Right, okay. This should still be a nice, easy fight. Right here. Oh, in come the adders. But this is working in my favor for the time being. So this is all absolutely fine. Get a squirrel down. Use that to put down a stoat. Get me more of this. John is still two bones away from being playable. But I can kill all of this. To be honest, I'd rather not kill this guy. We'd better to not do so. But what can you do? If they do end up both dying, then no. Bonus damage. Okay, yes. Extra damage gets passed to the cards behind it, which is bloody convenient. So, four cards. I could break my bone pig, but probably not a good idea. Just take a card. There's just a free gek. Now my gek can actually kill the adder for free. Boom. Love it. Because he's going to get his attack the moment I end my turn. So adder's dead. And that should be 
victory. All right. Everything's under control. Into a cave for another gamble. Then I can hopefully get myself a really good totem. Okay, two cards of the same kin. Three sigils or six total health. I mean, ooh. How many cards of the same kin do I have? I'll go for health. This feels a little bit of a stretch, but... One, three... No, one shy, five. You don't get to punish for that, by the way. You just don't gain a benefit. So, okay, over to the totem lady. Now, I'd like to get a new head. That would be really good. So, there is a bug head or bird head. I don't really have that many. Then again, I've got a few bugs. I will take bug head. Going forward, any bugs I play will get better after their first turn. That's better than squirrels, because that's literally been hopeless the whole time. Bring on boss number two, and the cheating commences. Okay, boss number two is the fisherman. This guy is an absolute monster. I don't like him. Okay, once again, he's got two stages, and he's got the hook. So, he can just steal your cards, and he'll always steal a good one. So, okay, let's see what we got here. Kingfisher's coming in. Kingfisher is a flyer, and after it's done its business, it will immediately just disappear. So basically, they're really hard to kill, but that's fine. It's kind of filling up space on the enemy's side, so I'm okay with this. Best thing we can do is get stoat out immediately. So just play a squirrel, and then get stoat just uh, on the side. Stoat now lets me get anything that costs one out immediately. Now, I could put the Gek straight in play as well. And I'm going to do it because that is just damage. Then we just need Bones for John. Now, I could get Bones out of the Greater Smoke, but this guy isn't going to attack the Great Smoke. I need to wait to see what's the best spot for the Great Smoke. So, two in my favour immediately. Kingfish comes in, flies over what was there. So, okay, what's he planning to steal? He's planning to steal my Gek right now. Take a card. Stunted Wolf. Precisely what I wanted to say. The problem is he might decide to steal my Stunted Wolf. But it doesn't matter if I can end this phase right now. So Stunted Wolf. Sacrifice Stoat to get you right over there. So yes. He's now going to try and steal that next turn. But it doesn't matter. I should win phase one immediately. So one, two, three. And boom. This is where things get nasty, by the way. Really nasty. Now, it's still going to look nasty because he's going to put down some really worthless buckets in front of me. But, um, would you believe uh, when those buckets die, bad stuff happens. Like, really bad stuff. You want this fight to be ending, like, really damn soon. Okay? Whatever it cocky takes to end. So, here we go. Mantis getting stronger. That's actually really good. Okay. Um, Mantis. Play that right now using Stoat. And there we go. So Mantis is going to take out all of this. Yeah, stuff's about to start getting nasty. I put down too many cards and it's going to play into his hands. Okay. What have I got? What have I got? What have I got? I do have the ability to get John down with the Bone Pig. But there's no space for him. I can give myself another, yeah, sacrifice point. But I don't need it. And then there's the Knife. So, remember those, uh, yeah, little, uh, tongy, skewery McJibbles? That lets you, uh, pull out one of your own teeth in order to put it on the scales uh, to make the scales uh, be in your favour. This is like that, but even more so. So, uh, you'll place a weight on the scales. Uh, the pain is temporary. Yeah, you use this to... to well, we'll get to that. We'll, we'll get to this in a second if it becomes necessary. There's nothing more I can do. Play... And here come the great white sharks. But on the plus side, we're just trying to take out the great whites. And now they're going to start doing a lot of damage to me. And they're going to go swimming. Still on the plus side, the mantis god is now in play. I may as well get a card in play. I might get lucky mantis. Okay, I should probably just play the squirrel at this point. Just because why not? Yeah, do it. Okay, get the squirrel in play. Use that to get the mantis down right now. So that's a lot of firepower going around. Great smoke. 
goes to here. John gets played to here. So whatever happens next, they can't attack my back line. I might be able to do some damage to all of them. Because right now they're swimming. So I think that means damage bypasses them. I might be able to just kill him right now. So yes, 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 yes. Before the sharks resurface. Boom. Because those sharks would have just cleaned my entire line. With that... Okay, I get my second candle back. He's not cheating that hard. And uh, World 2 is complete. Alright, so Mole Man. Everybody loves Mole Man. He's... I mean, look at that magnificent bastard. Alright, I don't care what he does. I want to take that card and I want to date this man. Alright, that's my romance option for the, uh, for the end of the game right there. So, uh, Child 13, which is uh, a very mysterious card. Because uh, it appears to just be a cat. But, like, it's a dragon. But it's also called Child 13. I don't know why. Strange Lava's really good, by the way. As you may guess, it starts weak. Takes two turns to get going. But if you could get this thing going, ho, ho, ho. Oh, the Mothman cometh. So, yeah, I'll actually take that. Mole Man, the magnificent stallion of a mole, gets uh, left behind, tragically. So... Okay, John, you should really have cut your own eye out there. I know it sounds bad, but it's actually not. So into the snow world. I have never beaten the snow world. I've never even got to the boss of the snow world. So I don't know what I'm going into right now. Um, okay, bet on the cave or just, yeah, I'll just take a card. And then maybe go to the totem lady. And don't forget to re-roll if need be. Elk, who moves around... Kingfisher, who, yes, can go into hiding, and also flies, and corpse maggots. Hang on, remind me. So if a creature that you own perishes, a card bearing the sigil in your hand is automatically played in its place. Okay, so it's a backstop. Okay, I'll take that. That's actually pretty good. So yeah, I can replace dead creatures with that. Now, do I want to go over to Totem Lady to see what she's got? Yeah, go on. But then after that, yeah, the next fight is uh, he gets a totem. So, okay, what have we got now? That is uh, rats. Hmm, interesting. Alternatively, moves and flies. I mean, uh, hmm, not the best selection. I've seen better. I'll take the rat head in case I want it later. So, hang on, is that... Is that rat or is that wolf? Looking at it now, I think that might actually be Wolf. If that's Wolf, that's really good. I'm going to go for... Yes, I think that's Wolf. Sorry. I thought it was Rat. But no, I was wrong. Okay, that's actually really good. So now, my Wolf cards are even better. And uh, how many of those do I have? Coyote presumably is that. Stunted Wolf is as well. I haven't seen another Wolf card. But Wolves are like solid, dependable uh, three twos. So uh, they're really good. You know what? That is better than... When I say that, I've got two mancers. And I've got the strange lava. Maybe I should have stuck with insect. Then again, I like the stunted wolf. The stunted wolf is fine. So, okay. Now he's going to bring out his own totem as well. So, on this occasion, it is the elk totem. I get my free bone. And elks are prickly, is what he's about to do. So, if I attack them, I take damage in return. These are, yes, young elks, so we're going to get better. So... This entire game looks like he's going to be bringing out the young babies, but they will grow strong pretty damn fast. Okay. I think the best way to play this is to do precisely that against him. Because I've got the strange lava. If I can just make this survive two turns, we'll be in really good shape. So, okay, get this down. And play at the lava over on the side, where there's nothing coming in. And then we'll just wait and hope. Okay, it's going to be... Oh, this might have been a mistake, actually. Okay, we'll see how this turns out. Because now I'm just basically letting his elks come of age. Uh, so now that is, yes, getting somewhere sooner rather than later. I've got no bones. I could, if I wanted to, take... Yeah, I can get the man out on the field by taking the squirrel. Now, that would let me take out an elk fawn and also do some damage over here, which I feel like is not a bad call. Yeah, you know what? Yes. Get that to there. 
And then Mantis is going to go right here to kill this guy. But will be killed in return, unfortunately. But that is just more and more and more bones. So John can get on the field. So there's one. That's both dead. There's even more. That's now a raven. That's now a grown elk. But, 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 but. Oh, darn it. Was that? Oh. I should have counted the damage. I've lost a life. Okay, uh, no more do-overs. We're now fighting to the death. Okay. This is, this is fine. Let's just choose a card. I'm not going to gamble in the cave right now. I'd rather go to the campfire. So, turkey vulture. Ooh, a warren. Okay, spawns a rabbit. Uh, zero power, one a health. Honestly, I don't really see the advantage there. Now, turkey vultures are really good, but you need to have a lot of bones to make them work. Go on. Turkey vultures. Uh, three damage flying is lovely. I shouldn't have put so much faith in the lava. Games don't go on that long. Right. Plus one damage. So, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Who wants some damage? And, ooh. My poor little wolf friend is starting to feel not in great shape, to be honest. Uh, John could do more damage. Mantis could do more damage. Yeah, you know what? Wolf friend, you're going in, and then we're going to... No. No, 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 We're going to pull him straight back out again. That's fine. Just one. Let's play it safe. I need that card. He's pretty critical. Right. Another fight. I have to win this one. If this gets dicey, use the knife. And don't forget, yes, the pig as well. Okay, I've got some of my best cards right now. And yes, it was Wolf. So he's going to get better next time. What are you sending him? Giant pile of elks. One and one. We need to kill them. We need to, like, kill all of them right now. So, get a squirrel down. Use squirrel to get stoat. Stoat can take the hit. And then we use you to get out uh, this lad. And you're going to get even better. And then we can also get this to get out you. Okay, my back line is now protected. So, this is a really good start right here. In fact, that's enough to... That's enough to win. You can just win straight up in the first round. It's brilliant. So, okay. That's the shop who do give you things if you show up without anything to sell. Haven't seen a trapper around. Okay. Card selection into items into fight or totem fight is this side. Let's avoid that and go to a nice safe card pick. Okay. It's all going to be... We're going to be fine. Here's Reginald... I don't know who Reginald is, but he seems to be pretty cheap. And he is basically, like, you know, a cheap uh, adder-type card. So he can kill anything. I'm guessing, like, he was a previous player. Because horror game and creepiness. But I don't actually know. So, okay. Pull out one of my own teeth to weigh down the scales. Uh, let something fly. Or frozen possum. So that is, uh, yeah, basically just a way of blocking up something. If you desperately need something uh, to be blocked up. Which is not a bad call. So we'll go for that. Right. Into a fight right now. Bone Daddy gives me my free bone token. Love it. And yes, Coyote. Okay, so this totem is paying for itself. And it is yet more elks. So okay. We should be able to just... No, on this occasion we can't just win immediately. But we can come surprisingly close. So alright, just get the stunted wolf straight out. He can take one hit. And then, yeah, then we should basically have already almost won. So that is one, two, three, four. Right there. Then he's going to get even better. And he smells. So this guy's worthless. And then they're all going to start. There we go. Marvelous. I must trust you. Five. So that should be victory straight up. There's a get who can kill this thing. And that should be dead. And enough teeth to just push us over the edge. And some spares in case I run into, yes, the pelt shop. Okay. Pick a card, then totem, or pick a card, then that. I quite like the totem I've got. So let's go for pick a card based on cost. And I will go for, if it's available, one. Because with the stoat in hand, I'm not sure what it is. No, I've no clue either. But it, it's nice, isn't it? Whatever it is, I'm sure it's good. So we've just got some Cthulhu cards we don't understand. Let's just improve something. Don't know what happens if you approve the Cthulhu card's attack, given it doesn't seem to have one. Or rather, I don't understand to what it is. Can you even do that, by the way? And... No, apparently not. Good. Good, good, good. 
I'm just going to get you up to five. Because if you're five, I might just be able to win on the first round. If I draw you, I can win. No, back off. Just back off. Here we go. I don't know what this guy is. I've never seen him before. So, here we go. Snow boss. And, okay. A man you recognized. It was the trapper. Okay, we haven't actually run into him on this run. But, uh... Yes, the trapper sells you pelts. Then you sell the pelts to the shop. Today, you will s Oh, he's a cannibal and also he's creepy as anything. Okay. So, strange frog. Oh, that's creepy. Okay. Leaping trap. Hang on. Steel trap. When a card bearing this sigil perishes, a creature opposing it perishes. Oh, flip me. Okay, it takes things down with it. It's also a, a mighty leaper. Yeah, this doesn't mean flying attack. It just means it can catch anything coming this way. So what we've got to do is... I did not draw the card I wanted to say. Okay, but these cards don't hit that hard. Okay, 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 okay. What are we going to do? I could get a Gek out, which can not kill anything, but it could just get you out of the way. Not sure whether that's actually advantageous to me, to be honest. Yeah, the Gek would just die straight away, but it would give me a bone token, moving me towards other bits and pieces. This is not a good selection of cards. I'm feeling worried all of a sudden. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Okay. Um, what are we going to do? Well, I do have at spare bones uh, corpse maggots. I mean, a corpse maggot could take a hit from a frog. Do it. Break the pig. Send the corpse maggots out onto the field straight away. And then if it dies, yeah, it should win that fight. And then I can get the gek on the field in the empty slot. And then I don't need the squirrel. I'll hold the squirrel for next time and see if I can get Cthulhu operational. So that's one tooth in my favour. And now we've just got, yeah, that is back to where it should be. The trap does nothing. What's the best bet here? Flip, what is the best bet? That's going to do one damage. If I get him out, that's probably going to do two. And hang on, let's just read this really carefully here. The trap card. The creature opposing it perishes. If I attack this thing from an angle, that would suggest... Okay, I don't know if I'm being optimistic with my reading here. Then again, it might be better just to put it here. Yeah, take the uh, squirrel. And now put down squirrel. Put down squirrel. Ignore the trap. Just don't worry about the trap. Just get you down and get Cthulhu down here. That's going to be some good solid damage. And I've got some bone tokens. But I'm out of everything. If I wanted to, I could break this out. But I think we're okay for now. So dead and trap. Now is that going to take you down immediately? It takes him down, though. Okay, that takes him down. Okay, it's nothing but leaping traps. It's it's huge numbers of leaping traps. And also, I'm picking up wolf pelts because I'm taking on a pelt man. Okay, I've got... I've got, like, nothing left already. Uh, well, I've got this. Okay, do I have anything I can use for anything? Well, you're just going to stand there and you're just going to start... Why are you doing three damage? I don't know. But, I mean, it might be enough to... This might be enough to win by itself. I can't get this down without killing that. And I don't want to do that. So, I mean, I could put the wolf pelt down just to purely... No, it's not going to block anything. Hold. There's damage. That's you dead. And yes, it doesn't kill this. Okay, Adder's coming in. You're holding for now. Just keep drawing cards and hope for something. There's Strange Lava, which is great if I could just get it into position. But I'm worried because I'm about to win the first round. And he's probably going to start cheating. So I'm going to hold him for now. So go, go. Right, that's round 1-1. One, one. What's he about to do? Because he's about to cheat. And now the rules just change. The cycle must continue. Okay. Okay. And now let's trade. Uh oh. What what what's he doing? What's he? Whoa whoa. Those are. Okay, those aren't my cards, but they're really good. How on earth can I possibly beat these? Powerful cards. I will accept only the finest pelts for them. Uh oh. Ah uh, ha ha ha. The rest will stay and fight for me. I don't have any pelts. I've got like one pelt. 
Okay, I've got two from killing. Okay. So, going into the third boss, one, you want to hold pelts and not sell them to the woman if you find this guy out in the world. And two, you want to keep the first round going longer. So now I need to trade for anything. Because otherwise he's just going to come at me with all this. And these are... I don't think I can win this. Okay. So... Uh, yeah, this this is going to be interesting. How how do we how do we how do we use the wolf pelts? By the way, uh, and also, what do I want to get on my team? There is that's a mighty leap wolf. That is a stinky rattlesnake, which is pretty good, but would immediately be slaughtered by the great white behind it. Uh, ha <laughs> ha. I mean, a basic wolf is is not bad. Okay, so we've just taken that right. Yes, I've traded one pelt for that. I mean, that grizzly's pretty damn tough. And uh, River Snapper, Elk, and Rattler's not that good. Okay, so I can trade uh, anything for anything. I feel like uh, maybe I should have taken the Turkey Vulture. Okay, he's going to do three damage and one and kill Cthulhu. But I get an attack first with a plus two. Okay, it's time. It's time to just stab myself uh, uh, with everything. Though actually, first you need to choose a card. So, okay. John. You don't get the cards. They're just in your hand. Okay, I can't feel the grizzly. The best bet I've got is hoping that this does something. Because I don't know what it does. Mirror. That would imply it's going to reflect back. Right? Do, do we all agree that's what's about to happen? It's about to... Right, knife time. So, I just need to stab myself in the eye. Yep, there we go. That's that's fine. And that immediately gets me to rank four. Okay, eyes are really heavy. So, you could really screw the game in your favor that way. When my turn ends, that's going to do three damage straight to here. So, I've opened a path. That means I might be able to win before he gets to attack. Okay, split the squirrel down. Use the squirrel to uh, fund whatever this thing is. I again, I've no, I've no cocking clue. Just put it down. That's doing two damage, which is enough to kill that rattler. That's going to open up enough space that hope, basically, and go, go. Oh, the elks are intercepting. The elks were intercepting. The elks intercepted. Oh no, no. They must have had special sigils that meant yes. Um, some cards will move to intercept damage. Oh, I've got nothing. I've got nothing. Okay, what do I have? I've got bones. Basically, I need to draw a bone card. Right, okay, everything. Everything I've got left. This needs to be Coyote. Okay. It wasn't. It was my really good quality wolf. But, hang on. Could my really good quality wolf win the game right now because he's five okay hang on put the frozen possum thing that's a three damage use him to block this right and now sacrifice this as good as it is to get the five damage on the table actually can i can i sacrifice the the frozen card is that allowed no it's not a worthy sacrifice darn it okay sacrifice that in order to put that right there. So that's five damage right now. The scales appear to be in the middle. That might be enough to win. Unless anything's going to come in and intercept. But that is smelly. That is gets better next turn. That is attacks in all these different directions. And this one, I don't know what it's got. This might be enough to win. And one, two, three, four, five. Oh, flip me. That's a victory. Or at least it's a world three victory. Your lives are restored. Great. I don't have an eye, by the way. Um, so... Okay, yes, things are a bit fuzzy, but it's all absolutely fine. Amoeba that just changes its ability all the time. The long elk. I like the long elk. It can just kill everything, and then it moves. So, yes, we'll go for the long elk. Um, 
I did stab my eye out. Yes, I can choose a new eye. This is important, by the way, because you can choose all sorts of different eyes, but you may notice one of them's glowing. This is important because this actually affects how the world around you looks. So find salvation in Cuckoo Block. All right, happy with that one. Yes, it's lovely. And uh, I was kind of hoping this might be the, the end, but no. No, it's not. Okay, so, 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 uh-oh. Oh, this looks like, okay, you know what, I've decided I'm going to walk away just for the minute. So now I've got this eye, I can start seeing things. Okay, so, yeah, there's marks on the wall. And this is how I figured out how to, yeah, open up this bottom door. But I don't know whether there might be more... Because, yeah, if I put these into the position they're blazing supposed to be, that opens up this bottom one. But I still don't know how to open up the top. So, okay. Look really closely at everything. Look for anything I can now see. Like, check the globe. Is there anything on the globe? There is nothing on the globe. There's... There's fresh gold teeth. That might refresh every, every single world. There's also this guy... Who's kind of a friend in a bottle. You're supposed to keep him sealed. But no, defeat him once more, that should do it. He has no idea what you've got up your sleeve. Yes! Okay, one thing I've got is I've got some camera film. He kills you by taking a picture of you that kind of resets time. So if I could just get hold of his camera, then something might happen. Though I'm also going to check. I'm going to check the, um, the rule book. I'm going to check every single page. There might be something written on the page. I might be able to read... The pages that are obscured? No, unfortunately not. Dear oh flippin' dear. Nope, nothing there, and I still don't know how to access these tools. So there's plenty of mysteries yet to solve. And I suspect we're going to be screwed now. So, okay, top up my items, yeah. I've got no items, uh, let's top up the items. So, uh, Black Goat, which is a good card for getting a really expensive unit out on the field. Uh, bone tokens, yeah. Bone Pig is good. Uh, I'm going to take another Bone Pig, actually. And finally, Free Squirrel, which is never going to hurt. And yes, I kind of noticed this is presumably this house. My character has made it to here. I've reached myself. And now, uh-oh, the light's going out. Oh. I think I just became my peace. Okay. I feel like there's going to be trouble, by the way. I feel like the, the, the scary thing's about to happen. Oh, 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 oh. Yep, yep. Hi. Steps away from the strange cabin, you are presented with an opportunity. I don't offer my boons to just any traveller. If you're able to pass my trials, you'll be rewarded mightily. Okay, the Trial of the Fiend. Three drawn cards must include a card uh, with Waterborne. I literally don't have one of them. Trial of Skins uh, must include a Pelt. I don't have one of them. And Trial of Rarity uh, must include a rare card. I think I've got one of them. Can I just walk away from this? Is that allowed? No. Go for rare card. Um, don't know what's about to happen, by the way. Is that rare because it was a boss thing? Yes, Long Elk is a rare card. Success. So now I gain a powerful boon. Dramatically alter the game. Okay. Ah, this is another boon like uh, Bone Daddy. So, okay. Start with a black goat on the board. Okay. Draw twice at the beginning. Oh, that's pretty damn good. And Bone Daddy. Oh, wow. Okay, Mega Bone Daddy. Eight bones. No. Draw twice. Hello. Hi. Would you like to play? Oh, it's you. So that's what you look like. You're a scary old man with lots of leaves and stuff. Okay, I was curious. Okay, things are about to go bananas. Because, yep, yeah, it's one life. And I get the greater smoke. And one more. Oh, he's going to give himself. Yeah, he just cheats. Okay, so the cheating has begun in earnest. Great. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Okay, everything's fine. Bone Daddy gives me a bone. I can also draw twice. Stunted Wolf is... Okay, Stunted Wolf is amazing. Here comes Mole Man. Oh, no. Mole Man is... Yes, he's a protector. He'll move in and defend in the event of 
attacks on the back line. And what have you got coming in? A 3-3 amalgam. Okay. It's probably still worth getting into position to just get this guy up on the field. I mean, also, I could... No, I can't get Greater Smoke killed immediately. I could just put Greater Smoke here, because then this guy will kill it next turn. Don't forget you've got so many bones ready to go, but keep them. This is only phase one. Okay, so you always start with one at Squirrel, which is nice. I can use Squirrel to get stunted but improving Wolf on the field. So he's going to almost kill this guy immediately. Then I can't do anything with the rest of these, not just yet. So go, Mole intercepts, but there we go. That's him out the way. Uh, Smoke's about to die. Oh, that's a really well-placed bloody Mantis God, but it's pretty flimsy, all things considered. In fact, that might be enough to win phase one next. Stunted Wolf might be able to carry me. Okay, go for cheap cards, and now I can play again, so... John or... Actually, you know what? There is enough to get John in play. Okay, need to draw a second card first. Take a squirrel. I could get Cthulhu out on the field, but I don't know whether... No, John, look. Look, look, look. He's holding the thing. He's going to do each of the three bosses we've already seen, which unfortunately means he's going to kill the Elder Stunted Wolf. So the best thing we should do now is hold the cards, because I suspect he's about to start cheating. Uh, potentially. Then again, I might want something to block up all of this. That's got three. What can I do that could maybe defend? I don't know. I'm just going to hold for the time being. We're going to see what happens. And go! One, two, three, four, five, six. Phase one. Alright, what's he going to do? I don't know. So, okay. Enjoy the onslaught of rare creatures. Uh, but a true challenge was forthcoming. Okay, Shadow Figures. Uh-oh, what's going on? They're betraying me. Okay, it's... Oh, no, it's Reginald! No! Okay, so former players are coming in. Not John. Okay, John's still on my side. That's fine. Um, You can take out this guy. What are you even doing? You're a guardian, so... Okay, this guy will move to try and intercept and can also block. Reginald, just keep everything away from him. We need to do something to kill this laddie. The problem is I don't see many ways of doing that. Uh, okay, I can choose a couple of cards here. I feel like I should draw one more card. That is Coyote that's improving. And do I need a squirrel right now? I've already got one squirrel. I could... Okay. Okay, okay, okay. If I put Coyote onto the empty lane, we could just try and straight up barrel through this. And then hold everything else. But that means I don't get John out. But John is a bit flimsy, to be honest. Maybe just take a squirrel so we can get Cthulhu out if need be. But Cthulhu would be... I can't put Cthulhu here or he'll be killed by Reginald. I can't put him here or he'll die to Amalgam. So, I mean, I could actually just play him here. That might not be a bad call. Then it would eventually kill Reginald. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to get two squirrels out right now. And I'm going to use that to field Cthulhu. And that gets three damage, which is enough to kill Reginald in one go. And take out the stump. So, okay, put all that together. We might be about to win phase two. Is the best option to maybe get the turkey vulture out immediately. We could just try and completely stack the line. I think we've got enough firepower out for the time being. That takes out you. And that's one, two, three, one, two, three. Phase two. I've got enough firepower. The music just stopped, which worries me. Uh-oh. This damn moon is dramatic. Provides no value to the board. I wonder. Uh-oh. He just killed the moon with his magic camera. He just played the moon. Well, that's not cocking fair. Okay. Um, The moon can... Yes, it's big. Um, Beginning of owner's turn. Card bearing the sigil cool small creatures like squirrels into its orbit and moonstrike strikes at every opposing space strikes directly if no creatures oppose it but it does no damage so okay he just summoned the cocking moon 
Uh, Turkey Vulture could get around the back of him, though. Uh, do I have enough to play Turkey Vulture right now? Uh, 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 I don't know. Just just draw more cards. Uh, so that's Mantis. Mantis is pretty good. Uh, then I just need to get, yeah, the Mantis out. So, okay, this is fine. Play the Squirrel to get out the Mantis. Sacrifice that. Mantis is pretty good. Uh, then get out Turkey Vulture. Turkey Vulture can fly over the... No! John! Intercepted! Darn it. Probably should have gone for Coyote. Uh, well, let's just see what happens. So, lots of damage going on here. We're, we're attacking the moon as best we can. What's this? Weakening my moon with the stinky sigil. Yes, I am! Makes no sense. Moons don't have a sense of smell. This is not how I imagined this battle going. Okay, so my smelly wolf has actually possibly just dealt with the moon. Which is, I mean... This is going surprisingly well. Uh, okay. Well, keep going. Just attack. Go, go, go. And attack the moon. And just, just keep on. Keep on keeping on. I think we've, I think we've beaten the moon by being too smelly. And you actually destroyed the moon. I suppose all that's left is to finish me off. Oh, I feel like he's got one more trick up his sleeve. Oh, oh, yes, yes, go. I mean, we've... I don't trust him. Not a chance in hell do I trust him. I don't celebrate often. I seldom give gifts. But you challenger, you are worthy. Please do not be polite. Dig in. Can I? I can't step away. Is there something wrong? Your prize awaits. Okay. Come with me. Oh. Now I got some film out of the camera. Yeah, I want a photo. I want to take a photo of you, mate. Yes, grab it. And now, put the, yeah, put the thing into the thing. Take a photo of him, 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 take a photo of him. Where's he gone? Where's he gone? Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. What, wait, 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 where is he? Oh shit, we're actually properly, go. What? I don't like the game anymore. Okay, I appear to be standing in a T-shaped junction. All I could do is move around this T, but I don't see a way of getting through here. I can't see anything, so I'm suspicious we might be into the meta bit of the game. I'm going to go back to the start screen to see if anything's different, because, well, it just slightly glitched, so I'm guessing it is. Yep, this is definitely, definitely what I was supposed to... To do or not do or do or not do, I'm not actually, not actually sure. In the beginning, the world did not know cards, and it was a sad, sad world. Though I can't help but notice there was a creepy skeleton. Oh, those are my friends. That Stokes and uh, Right. Okay, so cards and the game master. They were the people who made the game. Okay, what the flip is happening here? So, okay. Yep, there's the Game Master using a wildlife camera. There's Stoat. Okay, so did some scanning. And then Magnificus. A brush. Well, based on the hair, you're the wolf. So, one person trapped their friends inside a card game? Possibly? I have a feeling that... The game might have only just actually begun. I feel like that wasn't the end of the game. I feel like that was just the beginning. And I believe this is, yeah, the wolf deck, right? That stink beetle, that stoked, that will presumably be, uh, yes, the actual uh, guy I was fighting. So I think this is a wolf. So scribe of beast, yes. I'll take that deck. Great cards added to my collection. What the flip is happening all of a sudden? Now I'm... What is this? I don't know. I've just found another game in the game, but also there's a third game stacked on top, and I don't want to go to this one, because that's blatantly the bloody cabin. So I don't want to go there. So I'll go to the the graveyard. It's not much of a better bet, John. And now I've met Grimora, Scribe of the Dead. Until quite recently, I was disgraced. Yes, then I messed up the memory in the game. Sorry about that. You must discern which tomb marks the final resting place of my lovely ghouls. 
So, okay, I found a piece of an epitaph, eaten by a hungry dog. I've learned something. Hello, can I speak to, to you, by the way? And, uh, hark! A living slice of lemon approaches! Bright and triggers a lime! Whatever that means, precisely. So, okay, I've got the same deck, or rather, a deck that I've seen before. Auto-complete my deck. Yeah, I've seen all, all of these cards before in the past, that's certainly true. And now I can play the same game again, except... Okay, hang on, the great scribe of... Uh-oh! I think I might accidentally be playing as the villain. I'm meant to play as the wolf man, but I may have made a mistake. So yes, it's the same game, just different now. And with an overworld and story and all the rest of it. And he now lets me pass so I can start investigating who's going to be the person this woman's looking for. Or I can presumably fight this guy to go down here and... Yes, indeed. That wasn't the end of the game. That was just the beginning. Now there's an entire flipping world of RPG Cardi McJibbles 2. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I would say, ladies and gentlemen, I think you don't get the point and neither do I. Because this here is Inscription and it is weird and odd and I kind of love it. So, okay. I'll keep it on how the video does because... I'm just kind of curious how this all shakes out. I have no bloody clue where this nonsense is going, but, uh, okay. Might well be an option for a live stream coming up. I'm kind of curious what the flip's about to happen at the absolute bare minimum. So, hopefully, you might be too. This game is out right now, I believe, so well worth a look-see if you're into slightly more weird things, because... Uh, Bloody hell is this a bit on the weird side. So, 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 as I say, well worth a look-see, and we might well see a little bit more of it on the channel we shall flipping see. But in the meantime, I've been Joel, this has been many a true nerd, and this has been the utterly baffling Inscription. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Now I kind of want to see if I can shoot something out of midair, so... Uh, and... Uh, it turns out I'm a genius at guns. Why is it beeping? What? What's beeping? Oh, my health, because I'm about to die. Everything's fine. You stay the flip down. I wasn't emotionally ready for any of this.